Ai Yoba Anantaha OT Greetings I want to talk about <clears throat> the Virgin Islands this morning and why there's so <clears throat> great a focus <clears throat> on the territory. I think that most people or a great many <clears throat> have a misconception as to what's actually taking place <clears throat> with our efforts in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Firstly, I'll say that the people of the Virgin Islands, they are no different than we are. They are us. They are Maipuri, our own diaspora people, <clears throat> diaspora. <clears throat> and these are things that we are not aware of, things that we are not privy to because we've had no reason to research <clears throat> and look into the facts of <clears throat> drinking my coconut water as prescribed by my herbalist to keep the electrolytes flowing. <clears throat> In the 1400s when the Europeans began to arrive, <clears throat> They arrived in the Caribbean territory. So the Caribbean territory is the beginning of the trade of slavery and the beginning of the the ball of deception and confusion, <laughs> you might say. Because people were, during the period of what's called the North Atlantic slave trade period, we were not allowed, and when I say we, I'm saying the colonizers, the colonizers were not allowed to transport slaves to the West, that's us. So as the Europeans arrived, they captured slaves in the Caribbean territory, <clears throat> migrated them to the mainland or the United States and stole various ones from the United States and migrated them into the sugar plantations down in the Caribbean territory and in South America. The U.S. Virgin Island territory is a territory of Arawak, Arawak people, Maipuri people, <clears throat> and the United States has only been in that territory for 102 years. When they arrived, they arrived stating that they had purchased the territory, <clears throat> but there were people living in the territory, as it has always been, people living in the territory. So our purpose in the Virgin Islands involves repatriating our people to their natural existence. Our people that are incarcerated, thousands of them shipped from the Virgin Islands into U.S. prisons, as I've stated before, utilized for slave labor and prison labor, you might say. Our position is that we have to move towards the territory to repatriate the people. And the newly developed position and role with Commissioner Thronatista, the Attorney General for the Maipuri Aroa Nation, 
allows us to now legally and lawfully go into the territory and protect and defend our people. This is something that's never been done before. It's a new ground, it's a new territory, new concepts and new, new energies all the way around, just totally brand new, everything is new. So we have to recognize that the people in the Virgin Islands and the Caribbean territory as a whole are the people of the Americas. They are the same as the darkened brothers and sisters that live in what's called the United States and the ones that live in South America. We are the same people. And our efforts at addressing the Virgin Islands as ground zero is because the United States is there. And because the United States is there and we have access to the United States, it becomes a primary location where we can gain the greatest leverage and the greatest international attention for the plight of the indigenous people that not only exist in the Caribbean and the U.S. Virgin Islands, but in the Americas. It has to start somewhere, and the start is at ground zero in the Virgin Islands. So I wanted to be clear that our actions in the Virgin Islands, they're not um, compulsive. They're very well thought out. And planned. But I will tell you what is compulsive. What's compulsive is the obsessive nature that exists amongst those people called black people. They believe that a rabbit has something to do with eggs. They believe that a man that comes down a chimney in a red suit <clears throat> has something to do with God. <clears throat> That's compulsory. That's cyclic. And for years and years and years of training, those people who are called black, they've been caught in a condition, a behavior of obsessive compulsory condition. <clears throat> and the role that we have with the Ma'ipuri is to help to break that cycle. To make one realize that he's not all those imaginings, all those titles that have been laid upon him, that he's been trained to believe belong to him. So it's not much, but I just wanted to get that off my brain this morning so that there will be clarity as to why we were moving towards the Virgin Island territories. It's a unification process. As we unify in the U.S. Virgin Islands, we unify the entire Caribbean territory, the entire territory of Atabe. There is no other source that can accomplish what it is that we are doing. For the first time in history, a lot of things are happening with Ma'ipuri and the indigenous movement that's spearheaded by the Ma'ipuri nation. So expect us to keep making history as we bring new energies and new directions to the table for the government to accept, for the opposing governments to accept, the colonizing governments. And as we grow out of compulsory conditions, as we grow out of obsessive conditions, at some point we have to unify. And that's the indigenous people across the globe. We're not there yet. 
because until we can unify the neighborhood, we can't we can't uh, we can't unify the city or the state. We have to unify the community, and we are the community of indigenous people. Thousands of us. We have to find our way out of compulsory existence and move forward with a different type of energy, with a different type of understanding, understanding that we are not fighting for our rights because we are opposed to other races. We embrace all life. We embrace all humanity. We don't embrace oppression and inhumanity. So we have to bulk ourselves against that. And through unity, we bulk ourselves against that. Through unification of body, then mind, then spiritually we find our way. And that's what's most important, finding our way out of this compulsory condition. So at ground zero, we begin to unravel the entire continent, North and South America. And the only support that I ask for from anyone is recognize that our fight and our plight is real. And this is not some movement to be free from taxation, to be filled with education free, to be filled with healthcare free and whatever other amenities that people look for. We're looking to be unoppressed, unencumbered, to proceed freely in our own self-sustainable existence. I'm trying to become <clears throat> Some say diplomatic, more, more um, <laughs> gentler, you might say. I'm working on that. They say you catch flies with honey and something, some shit goes like that. I don't, I don't like to catch flies. But I am making the adjustments necessary to allow people a more comfortable space to gain the information that they need from me. Because it's vital that the information is disseminated. And for me to leave this human condition without sharing this information would reflect a negative karma on me for not opening my mouth and saying things that should be said and making a way where there is no way. Life is always beginning. Every day it's beginning. And I wanna say that I, I didn't take on this role towards leadership. And I, I still have to say that I'm no one's leader. I am a participant in the effort to free us from the oppression of the colonized structure that has destroyed so much of our essence, culture, health, spirituality. Not tainted, but destroyed. These are the things that I seek to change. <clears throat> These are the awakenings that I 
seek to bring to all that's listening and that will listen. It's not hard anymore. We just have to unify and be organized administrators. I'm not the best administrator. Can't say that I'm really much of an organizer either. I just know the way. I'm a guide. We're very, very close. <clears throat> But the compulsory existence causes so many people not to trust, <clears throat> causes them to live in hesitation while we're right in the middle of the ocean drowning. We have people living in hesitation as to whether or not they should put on the life jacket because it doesn't fit right, because it doesn't look right, it doesn't have the right sparkles in it. We have to adjust and change. We have to adjust and change. <clears throat> adjust to the new era of energy that exists in the universe. That the grandfathers and grandmothers have known for centuries. This is our way back. <clears throat> we have to go back in order to go forward. In order to go forward, we have to be identified, recognized, acknowledged. This is in all things. It's not a momentary existence. <clears throat> it's ongoing. never ending from generation to generation. <clears throat> and we have to find it now to pass it on. This is the technological age and we're winning. I say to everybody that <clears throat> hears this communication, if you are from, naturally from your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents are naturally from the territories of what's called America. You are of the Maipuri diaspora. You can visit our website at maipuriaruanation.com maipuriaruanation.com You can download forms and submit them. Identifying yourself as a part of the Maipuri Aruan Nation culture. And we will accept you. There are no fees for that. There's nothing tremendous that you have to do except identify yourself. This is what we're asking of individuals who are called black, Latinos, Mexicans, African-Americans. We know that this is your territory. We know that this is your home. We know that you have a right to be here. You have to acknowledge that. You have to acknowledge 
that you know that you have a right to be here. You come forward and we will embrace you. All of you. Those in immigration should not be in immigration. They belong here. They are Maipuri. Those in U.S. immigration camps that nobody's talking about all of a sudden because there's quiet trafficking going on. They are Maipuri. It's kind of hard for me to <laughs> find that com comfortable place of kinder and gentler because there's so much destruction going on. So many lives so much suffering and when I'm faced with that it's hard to be Captain Smiley and there's no really nice way to say stop killing me There's no really nice way to say, get this building from on top of me. I'm crushed. So I'm crushed daily. By the diseases that our people suffer because of contaminations, like here in Flint, like here in Flint, the people of Flint, Michigan, all that lived here in 2013, 14, and 15 are infected with what's called Legionnaire's disease. Nobody has told them that. But because Legionella parasites were in the water and they were either sprayed with the water, taking a shower, or they drank the water, and in doing so, they were contaminated with the Legionella parasite. The Legionella parasite is an intracellular parasite that eats away at the brain. And over a period of seven to 10, 13 years, the brain has depleted itself from the bacteria and the excrement from the parasites that early stages of Alzheimer's and dementia and those things, they set in. It's not Alzheimer's nor dementia. It's the Legionella caused by the Legionella parasite that was in the Flint water system. The entire system was infested so everybody that took a shower between 2013 and 2015, they are contaminated with the Legionella parasite. And the government knows that. <clears throat> but when you have 75, 80% of the population that looks like me, it's a deliberate action. And that's why I'm thankful for Commissioner Thronatista, our Attorney General, because we will be filing litigation against the state of Michigan and various agencies that may go above the state level. They have deliberately entered pathogens into our bodies to kill us over a period of time. So we will not be looking to live out a safe and healthy, happy life. The contaminations and the pathogens have already been ingested, injected, put into your system.
So yes, Ground Zero is in place for a lot of reasons. So we have to embrace the people of Ground Zero. Because the fallout from Ground Zero is what will create the movement of the mechanisms needed to lessen the oppression of our people in immigration. Of our people in Mexico who are trying to come home. Panama. All of South America trying to come home. It's time for them to come home. It's time for us to ensure that they have a home to come to. Because we have been given the light, we've been given the knowledge, we've been given the way. So it's our responsibility to prepare for those that don't know the way and don't have the knowledge I'm inviting every individual, every individual from this country, within this country, the United States of America. If you were born, your parents were born black Negro, go a little bit further back and find that document that says that they were colored. Come to Maipuri and we accept you because you are Maipuri. And we accept you, you have a place, home here. We are Maipuri. the people of the forest of Abiyabiyala the people of the true blood of North and South America we have to ingrain this in our data information banks because we have to teach our children who we are, who they are, it is truly necessary. I thank you for your time.